Arsenal community, uh, Dark Dove back with you again. Um, I got another video. Um, everything I'm going to show here, uh, I've picked up since the new year. Um, it, it's basically stuff. A lot of well, some of it is recent, and a lot of it is going back to the start of the new year. Just stuff which I couldn't really fit in to the other videos. Um, it's just kind of a this is kind of clearing up a bit of a backlog, really, in kind of terms of stuff which I haven't shown. Um, some new, some kind of new vinyl, well, new as in kind of reissues, and um, some stuff which I've got on Discogs as well. Um, I'll start off with a reissue which I have been looking for. Um, just happened to find this in... Um, my recent uh, in my local independent record store, and uh, that is the reissue of um, of uh, Swan's debut self titled debut EP, uh, which originally came out in 1982. Uh, this came out, I think, this came out last year. Uh, Jack Styles showed this. Um, um, and as he pointed out, this this is kind of different from, um, well, it, it, this this is more in kind of post punk, um, kind of frame of things rather than their later kind of droning. It's not quite as extreme as their releases, which came after it, but uh, it is very much kind of. Um, Strongly, I think, influenced by Joy Division and similar bands, which um, uh, like that from the uh, late seventies, early eighties post-punk explosion. Um, so uh, it's a self-titled EP. Um, um, yeah, so that was on release on Muse or Muse Young Gods. Um, uh, Split release, uh, Young Gods being the, the Swans, Michael Geyer's own label. Um, uh, the actual day I picked this up, um, those of you who people who are fans of Swans or uh, may know about the controversy surrounding Michael Geyer at the moment. Um, I I didn't know of it till the guy that I bought this off at the record store told me about it. Um, yeah, so I. I, I I won't go to it here, but I just just suggest googling Michael Gaira a controversy uh, to explain you know to explain it better because uh, it's kind of a sensitive subject. Um, another reissue of a, of a post punk um, early eighties post punk album, uh, which has come out, which has just come out, is um, this is from This Heat. Uh, this heat, uh, their three albums have been reissued. Uh, very, very hard to find the originals. Uh, very, they're very expensive. The originals on vinyl. Um, I've been meaning to pick up Deceit, which is their third album. Now that I have ordered that um, in my local independent record store, but. In the meantime, I picked up this, which is um, their second album. Well, this is actually a mini album. Uh, this is Health and Efficiency. And this originally came out in 1980. Um, very nicely packaged. Um, has this, um, this obi here. And um, kind of Japanese style obi. And um, comes in this really thick uh, cardboard um, sleeve. Um, smells lovely too. <laughs> um, and um, comes a booklet. So there's a um, really nicely packaged um, reissue. Uh, now th those have been re these are out at the moment. I I want to pick up this seat. Um, possibly may pick up the debut album as well, but if I can afford it. But I think it, yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so this is um, um, highly experimental post-punk. This heat kind of bridged the gap between progressive rock and um, and post uh, between progressive rock and post-punk. Um, Charles Hayward, who was a former member of Gone, um, I'm actually I'm Facebook friends with him, and also. Uh, he's he's active on on, on YouTube as well, um, but um, yeah, so it's it's kind of, kind of very influential bands. Um, you know, did, didn't sell much records during their time, but were extremely influential on the um, kind of experimental on post punk and industrial music in particular. Um, so this is um, uh, Hilton Efficiency. Originally came out in nineteen eighty, so now it's been reissued. And um, so yeah, so their 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 back catalogue has been reissued. Uh, previously, um, I I have all those albums on download, but um, um, but it is nice to ha have that one on vinyl for 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 now. Um third album which I picked up at that same record store now this I got this was part the, there was a sale on which I actually I actually only found out about it when it was almost over on the very final day uh, it was 25% off sale off all new stock uh, so I, I found out about it belatedly and came along on the final day when almost everything kind of of interest was gone but I did pick up one item um this is some okay so maybe i should have warned you first about the cover but um this is pharmacon uh this is well this is isn't exactly new it's been around for it came out i think in 2013 but um it had been sitting around in the store for a while and i've been kind of considering whether to get it or not but finally grabbed it for 25 percent off the um the the price, but Pharmacon is, um, it is a performer, I just can't think of her name just now, a, a young lady from the States, she, she's a performance artist and a musician, and she performs under this name Pharmacon, now uh, this, okay, this, okay, I hope there's no vegetarians watching, and um, this is a one of her performances where she covered herself with meat. Um, there's also a poster, and you may want to avert your gaze because it's a bit, a bit gruesome. Um, uh, so she w went to the butchers, I think, with a big shopping list. Um, this as well. Um, it's called. Uh, b b bestial burden and it's basically two long tracks um now getting back to industrial music again it's very kind of i thought it was very reminiscent of um Trobbing gristle's um journey through a body uh, which i have on cd um very kind of um disturbing um but if you're into kind of you know stuff that's a bit far out kind of out there uh, into you know early industrial music uh, this is right up your alley um, uh, so that's oh, it's, it's on sick bones um, uh, records who uh, it is sacred bones so um, very interesting label uh, putting out a lot of very very good releases there over the last few years um okay so moving on a, th a couple of discogs purchases now both of these the both of these purchases were, were um enabled through me selling other items um i have been selling a few things lately um some of them um some of the items i've sold i've 
just put the money into <laughs> unfortunately this month this month I've had to put some into my mortgage um, but I have bought a couple of things along the way which um, which the proceeds of items that I've bought online uh, one want list item which I've been meaning to pick up for the last couple of years um, is this uh, Lux Barberinino uh, this has been out a while now. I think this came out in 2012, I think. Well, uh, this is pretty much a, almost a, uh, an unplayed copy which I purchased online. So um, uh, he does have he, he does have another one coming out at the moment, but um, uh, this is well, it, it's very much in the vein of his um, of his ambient um, so of his ambient series. Uh, it, yeah, so now this comes with um, a double album and it comes with a series of prints. Um, six or four, six or four in total. So, um, beautiful print works, artworks. Um, all kind of um, these kind of autumnal, and they and they go perfectly with the music. Um, these prints, you know, music-wise, it's it's um, it is ambient. It is com straight, completely straightforward ambient, um, in the style of his um, of his nineteen seventies um ambient albums. You know, like. Music for airports, but um, it, so um, but like it, I wouldn't say it slavishly follows the you know the, the 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 same conventions of those early ambient albums, but it is very much um he's bringing you know ambient into the um twenty first century so 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 to speak. But um, it is a gatefold. I, said, I, I don't actually know what the gatefold looks like inside because I haven't um, taken off the wrap. But um, so that was a knocked off my want list. I had been meaning to pick it up for a long time, but just um, never got around to it. Um, another item which I bought on Discogs and which again was purchased with the proceeds of another item which I sold um, is this and this is uh, by Boards Boards of Canada and this is a EP in a beautiful place out in the country and this was released in the year 2000 uh, it Came out two years after the release of their um, breakthrough album, uh, "Music Has the Right to Children." Uh, very much musically in the same vein as "Music Has the Right to Children." Um, this is there's a few different editions of this, but uh, this is on sky blue vinyl, as you can see there. Uh, now these kind of mysterious images, um, kind of, uh, there are references to um, David Koresh. Um, you know, if those of you might remember the Waco siege from 1993, that is actually a picture of him there. Um, it as with board, with boards of Canada, there's always these um, kind of underlying. Th this is kind of on the surface this kind of pastoral kind of themes of pastoral and themes and childhood but there's always this darkness lurking under the surface and um, such is the case with um, with this um, in a beautiful place out in the country uh, on warp from the year 2000 and uh, big big boards of Canada fan um, um, okay, moving on. 
Um, usually I have a lot of um, charity shop and thrift shop um, purchases to show you, but uh, I don't have so much of them this time. Um, I'm going to move... Oh, I, I just... One more item which I got in that same independent record store where I showed the first couple of items. The next item uh, was got through store credit. I actually did a trade-in for, for this next record that I'm going to show. Um, uh, I, I did a trade-in with a bunch of CDs. There were, there were CDs which I, did, which I didn't want, but um, I picked them up specifically because I know they're the sort of thing that these guys in the shop would be looking for. So I knew that they would um, do a trade for them. Um, maybe about 10 CDs or so. Um, so I did a trade in for something again. Um, oh. Now, this is by Karenheim Stockhausen. Uh, and this is Mantra. This is um, a, a composition um, recorded in 1971 and released on. Deutsche Gramophone. No, I don't have much um, stockos and uh, very hard to find in the wild. So um, I was determined to get my hands on this. Uh, this is in their in their second hand section. No, it's a, it's a, it is a second hand. Um, it is an original pressing, and it's a really really lovely condition. Um, show you that um, Deutsche Gramophone um, label. Um, so, this is a piece called Mantra. It's specifically piano based and it is performed by these two guys, um, two brothers, um, Alphonse and Alois Kontarski. I don't know whether they're German or Austrian, or, or maybe they're Swiss. I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. Possibly Swiss, yeah. But. Um, um, and the, it was conducted by, um, was it conducted by Stockhausen himself, I think, um, possibly, but um, kind of almost has, an, has, a, has a kind of an ambient feel, almost very kind of minimal, uh, satty kind of a feel, but in that kind of specifically Stockhausen kind of mode, which, you know, anybody's familiar with him. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so very pleased to get my hands on that because um, I don't have a lot by him. And um, I did a very nice trade as well because I think the CDs, you know, that, that, that I traded them in for didn't really cost me much. I picked them up mostly in, in charity shops. Um, okay. Now I am going to move on a little bit. I went to... Uh, I've been, a few, been to a few record fairs lately. The most recent one I was to uh, only ended up getting two records. Um, it was quite disappointing. Didn't see much there that interested me. Um, so I just picked, I just made two pickups. One is um, a Fairport Convention um, Full House. It's from nineteen seventy. Uh, this is our first album to not feature um, Sandy Denny. This is the first album released after she left. So it's from 1970. Um, this is actually an original um, uh, Canadian pressing. So from the, the land of Bobby Gas. And it's on A&M Records. Um, yeah, so... Oh, okay, this right. Um, okay, that's kind of a bit awkward. Um, so, you do kind of miss, you do miss Sandy Denny's voice or her vocals on this record. But, I mean, it does stand up in its own right as a, as a very good record. Now, that, not one of their best, obviously, but still, um, still an excellent record. Um... Uh, the standout track on it is um, Sloth, uh, which is which finished, closes side two, 
or sorry, sorry, one roller, uh, an extended track, and that, that is really the cracker of a track. Um, so it's it's not one of the best ones, but it was definitely worth grabbing. It didn't cost me much. Um, I think it was about six euros, or I think it's six or seven euros. Um, in the same seller, um, I only picked up two items. From the same seller, I picked up another album, which um, I've been meaning to pick up for, for, for a long time. But um, Steely Dan, Countdown to Ecstasy, from 1973. Uh, this was their first album that I listened to in full. It must be about 20 years ago now, on, on cassette. Or maybe, or did I, or maybe I, I think I borrowed it from the, from the library, the CD maybe, and I and then I taped it. Uh, I don't know what happened to tape, but anyway, um, picked this up pretty cheaply um, at the record fair. I think it's about again. I think it might be about six euros. Um, this is my personal favorite um, Steely Dan album. Um, love. Love the tracks. Uh, um, my old school, um, uh, Boston Rag, Showbiz Kids. Uh, yeah, um, uh, Steely Dan are, are kind of divisive band on the VC. Um, quite a lot of people don't like them on the VC for some reason, but I've, all, I've always been a big fan of them. Um, and Okay, now that's not the only Steely Dan album I picked up. Now I picked this up separately, uh, this one that I'm going to show maybe a week later at another location, another uh, at a um, second hand record store. And this is Gaucho. Uh, this, was, this was their last album before they split up. Uh, they reformed again in the 90s, but anyway, this was released in 1980, so it was the last of their you know, the kind of Steely Dan Mark one, but um, uh, quite jazzy, um, yeah, more, very, very jazzy feel, um, uh, kind of, um, it, it wouldn't be my personal favourite now, but um, still do like this, um, uh, this was very cheap as well. This is only a fiver. Um, okay. So, moving on. Now, there's um. Uh, there is a record store, a kind of a record store, come bookshop, here in town, where um. I've made some nice purchases in the past, uh, run by an elderly gentleman. Um, he, yeah, his pricing is kind of like, if there's something that he's unfamiliar with, he's, he can tend to underprice it. Now, that was definitely the case with this item. This cost me only three euros. Um, and it's Steve Lacey, and um, this is called Anthem. Steve Lacey, um, uh, free jazz, one of the, you know, big figures in free jazz. Um, this came out in 1990 as one of a, a later period um, recording. Um, this this was recorded in 1989, released in 1990. It was it's to do with the commemoration of the um, French bicentennial of the French Revolution. Um, Uh, it basically consists of, a, of, a, of a several long tracks, uh, which is I think, which I think possibly maybe why it was so underpriced because I think the seller thought maybe thought it was a twelve-inch single, but I know it is it is a full album, and um, yeah, so it's a, it's kind of a mixture of orchestrated pieces and free jazz elements. So um, and who's who's on this? Um, mostly names I'm not, yeah, but some Steve Lacey himself on soprano saxophone. Um, other players I'm not familiar with Glenn Ferris trombone. Um, so 
But yeah, this is definitely, I, I don't have anything by him uh, prior to this. So um, uh, this is the beginning of my collection. Hopefully I'll pick up a few more um, Steve Lacey items along the way. Because uh, this is definitely whetted my appetite uh, to pick up more stuff by him. Um, in the same store for five euros, I uh, made another very interesting purchase. Um, this is a compilation album, Zimbabwe Hits Take Cover. This is a 1986 compilation. Uh, it's on a label called Disca Freak. Uh, so it's um, music from Zimbabwe, uh, which which was at the time 1986 fairly newly independent, um, mostly kind of a Afro, I wouldn't quite call it Afrobeat, um, kind of Afro kind of African pop, kind of a, like a Zimbabwe and take on kind of um, commercial pop. Um, it, it, it's a bit hit and miss. So, some of some of this is really, some of the tracks in it I really like, some is more, but uh, it's uh, interesting pickup all the same. Um, like it, it does have some really good moments on it, and um, I think it's, it's pretty. It's rare enough, I think, and for a fiver, I think it was worth this. And um, a great cover as well. Um, now the, the the final item that I picked up at that location, uh, I did pay a tenner for this, but. Um, 10 euros, but I think this was well worth it. Um, Lou Reed, uh, this is his album from 1989, New York. Um, had been meaning to pick this up for a long time, on my want list for quite a while. Um, so this is, um, this really is one of his strongest albums. Um, his, his songwriting here is, is just every bit as good really as it was on Transformer and some of his uh, earlier albums. Um, um, very kind of conventional kind of, um, um, you know, kind of musically, but um, I mean, it, songwriting on this is, is superb. Uh, lyrics, you know, and he's really kind of at the top of his game on this. Um, uh, I, I did see Lou Reed live. I, I did see him perform live in 2008 here in Cork. Um, little did anybody know that you know that he would be not with us um, a few years later. But um, it, it seems that his death has kind of, since he's died, has been such a, a deluge of of legends leaving us. You know, in particularly with David Bowie. Uh, but I was very lucky to see him live, catch him live in 2008 um, here in Cork. Um, so, um, another long time want list item, Pentangle, uh, Cruel Sister. Uh, this is from 1970. Um, uh, not an original pressing. Um, this is a reissue from 1977. Um, this extra label, extra. Um, yeah, so um, uh, Love Pentangle have several albums by them. Um, uh, these are all traditional, um, their take on traditional folk songs. Um, uh, Lord Franklin, um, Cruel Sister. Uh, yes, yeah, so excellent, excellent album. Um, okay, okay, we're nearly, nearly a half, almost at the half an hour mark. So we'll make it kind of quick. Um, um, just three more items to go. Uh, there's a new flea market in town. Um, I've been checking it out. Um, Made this pickup. Um, 
there's two, there's two vinyl sellers there. I uh, picked this up last week. Now this is um, uh, Bernard Herrmann who composed the music to Psycho, um, Taxi Driver, um, and a lot of Hitchcock movies. This is um, and this is an orchestral piece. Well, well it's um, well it's actually a string quartet piece. Echoes um, uh, performed by the um, the Amici Quartet. Um, uh, it's 1967 on um, Pi. There's also this um, Edward Rubra, an English composer, another string quartet, um, string quartet piece. Um, really love that cover. Uh, I'm not too sure what, the, what it is, but it looks like kind of chunks of glass or something. That, that cover photo. Uh, really interesting. Um, the the Herman the Bernard Herman piece, um, when you listen to it, you can kind of strongly hear um, kind of elements of you know his film work in there. Um, but particularly Psycho, there's a kind of, there seems to be a couple of um, nods to Psycho in there. Um, now this is the other item I picked up at that same flea market. Uh, the best of the Moog. Uh, this is an early Moog album from 1973. Um, little album. Um, it is by oh, um, Jean Jean Jacques Perry and Gershon Kingsley. Now they were big Moog electronic music pioneers, um, even before. Um, Wendy Walter Carlos that they were kind of the first to release this kind of commercial electronic music and this is I think this is actually a compilation of their first two albums which came out in the late 60s but um this this particular release is from 1973 um it's on Vanguard oh and by the way Ben Costello um you see that at PR <laughs> yes yes um uh, I've been at the location where, where, where those guys got this before so um, but yeah uh, early Moog electronic music which I'm a big fan of I, I love those early those early Moog albums um, I'm gonna finish up with a CD um, I've been meaning to show this for ages but somehow never managed to fit it in I, I got this in the same location as a Lou Reed um, Luciano Berrio, um, he was an early electronic music pioneer as well. Uh, he's kind of in the same vein as Stockhausen. Um, I I Italian, um, you know, big figure in 20th century um, avant-garde music. Uh, this is a, a compilation which came out in 1990. Well, it's not a compilation. It's um, it's collecting a series of works he did called uh, sequences or sequencias um, composed at various points from the 60s through to the early 80s um, um, the, the, there's pieces for various instruments um, guitar, um, flute, piano, bassoon and uh, they're all, all solo performances spread out over um, uh, these three CDs. Now it came out again on Deutsche Grammophone. Deutsche Grammophone there, um, uh, on which the um, the Stockhausen album that I showed earlier came out on as well. So. Um, um, Okay, so we're nearly on 35 minutes, so I think it's probably time to, to leave it at that. Because um, uh, Thanks very much for watching, everybody, and uh, this will go up, um, I think I'll throw this up on Friday. So have a great weekend, everybody.